and welcome back to my channel. Everkum in the channel like a swagatham. So today I am going to start a new session. Uh, today I will be starting a fluoroscopy and discussing few of the questions related with fluoroscopy and this will be continuing in the upcoming weeks also. It was a request of many of the viewers that I have to uh, do a video related with uh, or discussing about fluoroscopy MCQs. With their request I have started up uh, going to today from today onwards. I am starting up a sessions related with fluoroscopy and the MCQs related with fluoroscopy. And I have already discussed that I have a few of the WhatsApp group and I will be giving the details of these WhatsApp group in my description box. Those who wish to join any of these groups can just WhatsApp me. I will be giving my WhatsApp number along with the email address and if you need any of the study material for GCC licensing exam you can just mail me and mail you the study material. So patiently watch till the end and stay tuned. So let's begin part 1 tutoring of fluoroscopy moving on the first question. Fluoroscopy cannot be done without a dye. Options. Option A true. Option B false. The answer is option A true. So let's see the explanation. Fluoroscopy is a process that depends upon the radioactivity of the dye to show the image. When the dye is injected or ingested, it emits radioactive waves which are captured or recorded using devices. Thus, for fluoroscopy, dye is a necessity. Moving on to the second question. In the modern fluoroscope, the fluoroscopic X-ray tube. Option A. Can be with her under or over the table. Option B. Is always over the table. Option C. Is always the same as the radiographic tube. And option D. Is always under the table. The answer is option A. Can be with her under or over the table. So let's see the explanation. The fluoroscopic system have an X-ray tube position under the table top with the image receptor above the table and it is often used for gastrointestinal imaging. Moving on to the next question, question number 3. Compared with the radiographic examination, the primary purpose of the fluoroscopic examination is to visualize. Option A. Cross-sectional images. Option B, dynamic images. Option C, longitudinal images. And option D, static images. The answer is option B, dynamic images. So let's see the explanation. The fluoroscopy differs from radiographic imaging by its use of a continuous beam of X-ray to create images of the moving internal structures which can be viewed on a monitor. This is also same as, means fluoroscopy is same as that of ultrasonography. It is also, means fluoroscopy is also a real-time imaging modality. Moving on to the next question, question number 4. Fluoroscopy normally requires a tube current of, option A is 0.1 to 1 MA. MA means milliampere. Option B, 1 to 5 milliampere. Option C, 5 to 10 milliampere. And option D is 10 to 100 milliampere. The answer is option B, 1 to 5 milliampere. So let's see the explanation. Fluoroscopy is usually performed using an average current of 1 to 5 milliampere at a peak electrical potential of 75 to 125 kvp kvp means kilo voltage peak moving on to the next question question number five compared with radiography the x-ray technique required for fluoroscopic calls for which of the following option a higher kvp option b higher ma option c lower kvp and option D, lower MA. So, compared with radiography, the X-ray technique required for fluoroscopy calls for which of the following? The answer is option D, lower MA. 
So let's see the explanation. Fluoroscopic apparatus uses low current that is 0.5 to 5 ma milliampere for continuous or near continuous X-ray exposure. The resultant images have relatively low signal to noise ratio but are of sufficient quality for patient positioning and require diagnostic and therapeutic procedures. So, fluoroscopic machines usually will be having low MA. Moving on to the next question, question number 6. Which of the following describes the fluoroscopic system designed to maintain a constant image intensity? Option A, automatic brightness stabilization. Option B, automatic channel selector. Option C, automatic programmed radiography and option D charged coupled device. The answer is option A automatic brightness stabilization. So let's see the so let's see the explanation. The automatic brightness stabilizer is that part of the X-ray control system which keeps the light output of an image intensifier constant over variations of patient attenuation and system geometry. So the fluoroscopy itself is known as the image intensifier tube and we will be discussing the parts of the image intensifier tube as well as that means the fluoroscopy and uh, its working will be discussed in the upcoming slide. And as you all know, when the x-rays are coming and hitting on the patient's body, the first happening is the attenuation. So, what is meant by attenuation? Attenuation means a reduction of the intensity of the x-ray photons either by absorption or by scattering. So, who is absorbing? The patient is absorbing. And who will get the scattering photons? These scattered photons will be received by the radiation worker. So this is what is meant that depending upon the variation of the patient attenuation and system geometry, this permits a constant TV or film exposure during a series of fluoroscopic examination. In the case of fluoroscopy, when compared with that of radiography, Radiography, we are just taking, exposing one particular area of interest. While in the case of fluoroscopy, it is a dynamic imaging. When we are giving contrast and we will be taking routine X-ray images, along with that, we will be exposing, we will be taking images depending upon the pathology. So, we are, yes, fluoroscopy is otherwise known as it is connected with a spot film device and a connected to a TV monitor. That means it is a real time imaging modality as if like ultrasonography. Moving on to the next question, question number 7. At which stage of image intensified fluoroscopy is the number of image forming photons lowest? Option A, entering the input phosphor. Option B, entering the photocathode. Option C, leaving the input phosphor. And option D is leaving the output phosphor. So, where will be the image forming photons lowest? It is the answer is option A, entering the input phosphor. So, let's see the explanation. The input phosphor converts X-ray photons and convert them into optical photons. That is, X-ray photon is converted into light photons and that phenomenon is known as luminescence. Moving on to the next question, question number 8. The component of an X-ray image intensifier are Option A, input phosphor, photocathode and accelerating anode. Option B, electrostatic focusing lines. Option C, output phosphor. And option D is all above. The answer is option D, all above. All these are the components of an X-ray image intensifier tube. 
that means input phosphor photocathode accelerating anode electrostatic focusing lines as well as out output phosphor so let's see the explanation an image intensifier consists of the following major components an input window an input phosphor and photocathode and several electrostatic focusing lens an accelerating anode and output phosphor screen and all these are inside a protective vacuum case moving on to the next question question number 9 The image intensifier tube works on the principle of option A thermionic emission option B photo emission option C multiple induction and option D is none of the above the answer is option B photo emission So let's see the explanation an image intensifier system works by collecting photons through an objective lens and converting them to electrons via a photocathode increasing the electrical energy with a micro channel plate and converting the electrical energy back to light using a phosphor screen and presenting the image for viewing through an eyepiece lens this is what is happening the working what is happening in the image intensifier system moving on to the next uh, question that is photoelectric emission option a it is the emission of electrons from a heated wire option b it is the emission of electrons from an illuminated sub surface option c it is the emission of electrons and option d is it can occurs at the in input phosphor of an image intensifier tube The answer is option B it is a emission of electrons from an illuminated surface hope you all are clear with today's session i had a query related with nuclear medicine for uk how is the registration for nuclear medicine in uk actually nuclear medicine is not having any such registration you can directly apply for nhs jobs only thing is that you have to have a more experience around 4 to 5 years of experience you can directly apply for nhs jobs you need not require any type of registration in the case of nuclear medicine so it was a query i have received in the couple of weeks uh, so uh, you all know that uh, sunday is the day i used to upload new videos so patiently wait for next sunday until then stay safe stay healthy and before that as i always say if you like all my videos please share among your friends colleagues and please do support me by subscribing the bell icon too so that you will receive the notifications of all the videos i am uploading so until then stay safe stay healthy and stay tuned for next sunday